Hey guys, it's Byron here, and welcome to BSSE Production. Today, I am joined by Reese. Hello, everyone. And a while ago, as you may know, we both co-directed and made a new short film called Paranoia, which is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet. I would recommend seeing it, and Byron did do a very good job of all the editing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, making my acting even halfway passable is a good feat. Oh no, I think for like your first acting debut, which we'll get onto soon, it was a pretty uh, a pretty good start. So yeah, this is going to be like a behind the scenes video of Paranoia, explaining like how it was made. But before we start all that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has viewed the video, who has shared it, liked it. Because we just can't believe the response. I think it's at like nearly 300 views now. Yeah, I, I just cannot believe that, that this has just got so popular. I mean, I mean, two, like, it's about 280 views now. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite by far like one of your most viewed videos, if not your most viewed video. Yeah, it's insane. It's so, it's just so crazy. I mean, I'm, thank you all for just watching and sharing it. I mean, it means so much to me and Byron. Because we were really pleased with it ourselves and just to have other people enjoying it is great. And thanks especially to Moses Nose. I know you, if you're watching, you've shared this video out to lots of your friends and ah, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you Moses. You've done so much for making this video be just quite as popular as it is. But yeah, now on to the film itself. Uh, maybe some of you would be surprised to hear, or not surprised, I'm not sure, <laughs> to hear that this video was unplanned. We didn't really write a script or storyboard it. Like, one day we were literally just like, hey, let's go out and film something. And we did. Yeah, li literally, um, Byron was sort of like a little bit of stumpy, was like, oh, I haven't filmed anything for a little while. So I was like, oh, okay, Byron, let's just go out and film something. So what we decided to do was, um, we kind of went went out one day, and we sort of just started filming some locations just around Byron's, um, Byron's village. Yeah, we basically just had a walk around to see what locations would be good, maybe did a few test shots, and a week later we filmed the actual film. And we think it, it, it turned out really well, and I think just, especially for an aspiring filmmaker, which I am, uh, just going out there and filming something is just such a good exercise, and it's something I need to do more, so I think it was a great stepping stone for me. I think that is basically the best advice you can give to any aspiring filmmaker which um, you have kind of struggled with a little bit which is just go out and do something and you just anything even if it's mm. just go out and just film some scenery to get some interesting shots you sort of need to do that to sort of develop your own style yeah because in in the past i think i found it hard to justify filming and making a movie that's kind of that doesn't have an amazing concept behind it. But really, that's kind of what you need to do if you're an aspiring filmmaker, because I'm not saying it's impossible, but generally, you're not gonna make some kind of masterpiece. You're probably gonna make a lot of bad stuff, but it's just a matter of going out and doing it. Yeah, me and Reese both directed that film, mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of had the job of being more behind the camera doing like the framing and s cinematography of the shots and you were doing most of the acting, which I, I, I think you actually did a really good job for the acting, seeing as you hadn't really done any acting before. Thank you, I mean, it wasn't sort of definitely difficult, considering in fact this was my first uh, first acting job, I suppose, mm. and uh, I did rely on you to, to sort of tell me how to act. I'm going to crawl under the, your hand. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Uh, Can we like to is, is it possible for you to... Like, I know it's hard. Actually, it doesn't re really matter if a bit of you is in shot, I don't think. Have a... maybe step forward this way a bit. This way? Yeah, a tad more. Then, kind of bring your... Okay. Yes, down a tiny bit. I think that looks... down a tiny, tiny bit more. That's perfect. Well, I, I will say, Byron Beatty did most of the behind the scenes stuff, like the editing, the correction, and uh, colour correction, the cinematography, and most of the directing, while I mainly stuck to the acting. I mean, yeah. So, most of the work for how a film t turned out came to Byron, although... Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was you, definitely... You, you did do a lot of it, though. Yeah, I mean... I mean don't, I'll, don't, like, take away from that. I'm, I'm not going to take away from that, because it, while Byron did most of the directing, I sort of did give my input um, mm. quite a bit, and some of the shots were sort of my idea and all that sort of stuff, so it was kind of a, a shared effort, but... Yeah. But most of the work after we finished filming was down to Byron. 
Yeah, um, I do have to say that I was quite happy with how it was edited. Like with the, the colour correction, for instance, I put a lot, of, a lot of effort into making that really ominous and dark. And I think it turned out really well. I'll probably put a comparison on screen of the video before I colour corrected and the video after. Because I've, I've only with this film and shut in, the one I did before, have I really started really experimenting with colour correction, but it really does make your films go a long way with what I've found. It was, um, previously it was quite um, a fairly sunny day, I mean it wasn't mm. amazingly good day, but what you, what you made it look a lot cooler and a lot yeah. um, darker, which definitely added to you know, the atmospheric tone of the film. Yeah, and uh, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, yeah, the film we decided to make was obviously a psychological horror film, this is mm. kind of going on something else now. But, uh, and we wanted to make it feel like that, but at the same time, we wanted to make a lot of use of the multiple locations around the area. Mm -hmm. So we did those like uh, dissolve transitions of, I guess, the camera being right into your mm -hmm. eyes in, in an extreme closer, then dissolving to another shot of your eyes, zooming out into somewhere else. And I personally think that was a really effective way of both suggesting that, uh, uh, Reese's character's mind is really irrational and crazy, but also managing to have lots of variety in terms of where we shot it. Yeah, the thing, the thing with a lot of the thing, like a lot of the shots in this film, was the less of a result of us actually pre planning it and more of us going out, or oh, what can we do, uh, how we're going to get different locations. It's more like the location which we're in film, influence of film rather than us and choosing what to do with the location. Yeah, which I think is another really good thing to do because I, I think. One of the biggest things I like about filmmaking is just making use of what you have to try and get whatever you want done. And there we were like, okay, we have all this stuff at our disposal. Let's try and make the best use out of everything possible. And that is something I'd encourage and urge any filmmaker to do. And one way we try to do that was we use sort of multiple different um, configurations of the camera. Like most of the time we try to use a handheld camera, which especially when I was in the shot I was running in, it was also quite a shaky camera. Yeah, but it, it, it was all intended. It wasn't just a handheld camera for the sake of it. Yeah, we, we did want to... Using the handheld camera gave us a lot more dexterity on when, where to use it, you know, the angle which you could use a tad. But for some, for some of the wide shots, especially, we used a tripod because that would be a lot more stable. Yeah. We, we tried to like give, give a sort of mix of uh, our different um, camera angles mm. and obviously had quite different, you know, camera configurations. So, yeah. So we kind of just did the best we could, really. Yeah, I, I'd say it was kind of mostly close-ups with some extreme long shots. And I think those two things twin together really nicely. But, like, some people have, like, uh, criticised the use of the handheld camera in the comments, which I completely get. It can sometimes be overused in films. But I, I, I personally really liked how the film kind of started with a few shots using a tripod. Mm. Then most of them after that, other than some shots near the end, were handheld just to show like a progression in your character's craziness, I guess. And um, so yeah, I personally was, I, I, I thought we used the right amount of handheld camera. And other than that, to make the film such a jarring, uh, I guess, in like intentionally jarring and, uh, what's the word, uh, unsettling film, like mm -hmm. basically to make it a typical psychological horror film. We used a lot of jump cuts, for instance, like, which, uh, like, would have a close-up of Reese's face, then cut to an extreme close-up, things like that, and, uh, a lot of cutaway shots to random things in the location, like pylons, or, uh, a warning sign <clears throat> and with those we basically as we were walking around if we saw something that looked ominous or creepy we'd just like take a, take a video of it and we're like right this can uh, be spliced into the video somewhere. Yeah, I mean the fact it ended up being a bit on the nose especially with the danger mm. sign but yeah well like, like I say we were kind of just working with whatever we could get with the video and we and that was another thing we kind of came up with on the spot while filming we thought oh yeah in the transitions between there we could have the characters sort of um, have flashbacks in their mind or like have some form of a uh, just them looking into the past and with a, with a different locations and that's, that sort of melded into actual proper flashbacks with a different yeah. with a different um, you know shots from the end scene being spliced into the 
into the rest of the transitions. As well as that, the, the main shot me and Bayern were quite proud of was the wash, washing hands bit, because yeah. that, that was mainly a result of us actually trying to wash my hands, and, uh, and so it's not a continuity error. Yeah, yeah. because we needed to explain how uh, Reese's character uh, killed the person in the film, like my character, and then throughout all of the events that are supposed to have happened after it, mm -hmm. uh, what we, we needed to explain why he didn't have blood on his hands then, but it ended up being a really cool shot in and of itself, especially some of the shots of that fake blood dripping into the tap. I think a lot of people I've shown the film to, they've really been like, oh my god, that looks so real mm -hmm. with that shot, which I'm really happy with. And I guess this kind of links on to the story of the film in general. And the story is very, very loose. Yeah, uh, there's really yeah. not that much story until you get to like the last scene. Thing, thing is that we would love to say that was an absolute, absolutely intentional and a lot of it was left up to, you know, you, you the viewer. But it was sort of just a result of us doing this unplanned, unscripted. We yeah. just, we kind of just did whatever we wanted and, and kind of made what we, and kind of made whatever we could out of what we filmed. And, and we tried to make it sort of make sense, but I think somebody in the comments of the video, like likely so, did also say there were a few holes in the story, like how Reese's character's motivation for killing me wasn't fairly explained. And um, there was also another plot hole of like, how did Reese's character get to the point? where he was like lying down in the middle of a path in the first shot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, honestly, I'm not even going to try and counter <laughs> those points. They're very, uh, very good questions. Uh, and I also just want to quickly talk about my evil voice. <laughs> yeah, you're, the film. You're, you're definitely not generic evil voice. <laughs> you know what you did, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, it sounded a bit like Gollum, of, like Lord of the Rings. It, Gollum if he had some sort of like throat infection. You did this! Yeah, I, I, I don't know. How, I, how do you actually come up with that voice? Do you just kind of think of a generic evil voice and then do it? Yeah, I kind of, I think as I was editing the video, I was like doing like practicing some of the evil voices and then uh, I hadn't, uh, I was editing the video but I haven't recorded those weird voices yet. I didn't even know what I was going to say. But something with the, the editing just wasn't going how I wanted it to go. I was having a lot of technical difficulties and I was getting quite frustrated. And I was like, right, I'm frustrated. I'm going to use this as fuel <laughs> for recording my lines. I had no idea what I was going to say. Just got my microphone up, started like using my actual frustration to say <laughs> random lines and they were what appeared in the film. So. Yeah, I mean, it ended up working quite well, didn't it? Yeah, I kind of added an echo effect to it, and I think once that was added, I was kind of like, wow, I've, I've, I've actually scared myself here. For <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was overall just a very fun movie to shoot. I think we learned a lot from it. Like, there were some things such as me falling in the river, or one part. Okay, we've just been filming this by by a river. I'm here. Reese is comfortably at the top of that bridge. I'm, I'm smart enough not to be down there. Yeah, I've literally climbed down all here. I went down there. What's the result? Yeah. I just fell in, didn't I? Yeah, and uh, the Especially the, another thing that uh, when you, in the last shot, you know, when Byron got blood completely over his face, yeah? Well, basically what you did to do that was just um, pour, like, the, the bottle of Blake, Blake's blood. Blake blood? Yeah. <laughs> fake, fake blood all over your um, forehead and then kind of rubbed it in. thing is, it got onto your hair. Yeah. And, but, and first, first even your colour hair, you were, like, really freaking out about whether it would dye it or I like, was, stain it. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, is this going to stain? Because, like, straight after we'd filmed the shot of me with blood all over my head, like, dead in the shed. Hey, that ran. Nah. <laughs> I, like, jumped straight in the shower. I'm like, please get out. And, <laughs> uh, thankfully, it did get out. We'll leave this video now by showing you some bloopers <laughs> of, like, maybe me falling in the river and things like that. Um, but uh, before we do that, do you want to... 
Talk about your YouTube channel. Oh uh, yeah, um, I do, instead of you know, doing a filmmaking channel, I have a video game channel where I speak in very short, concise videos. Very much unlike this one. Yeah. But <laughs> basically, like, I kind of talk in very short, concise videos about different things in video games, you know. Such topics like, what, what is an action-adventure game, do console specs matter, and, and uh, well, if you guys are interested in video games, uh, there'll be a link in the channel in the description, hopefully. Yeah, it'll be certainly linked, and as I said, here are some bloopers, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you later. <laughs> My name, Jeff. Sorry, okay. <laughs> Look around a bit longer, and then do the running off thing. <laughs> are you okay, Reese? Did you hurt yourself or anything? Got three go phase! <laughs> oh s! It's <laughs> it! Let's, let's just do the one we've described. You're recording this? Yeah. Right. Okay, this is the final bit of our film that's called Paranoia or some something like that. We're not entirely or sure. Or where am I? Or where am I? Uh, yeah, we're, we're undecided on names. And basically we're thinking of the epic twist at the end that our protagonist is actually a murderer and he's been hitting my character, who has a lot of speaking in this film. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's been hitting him <laughs> over the head. <laughs> Filmmaking. Uh, I'm not sure how this looks. Anything else I should add? I oh, actually, that well. looks pretty good. Do you think? Do you think we should keep it as that? Anything else? Is that subtle enough? Um, if you want a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Like whereabouts? A little bit more around your nose. Like here? Or maybe just... A yeah, it's all like that. Uh, do you have a look? Uh, maybe. Yeah, we're just, we're just doing the makeup. We have a very sophisticated makeup department here on set. <laughs> of me using the lid of the bottle to... Fun fact! I've had this uh, fake blood thing for years. We first used it on The Breath of Death, which was filmed ages ago. <laughs> And we're using it here again, and there's still some left. It's kind <laughs> of a little bit crazy. Fun, fun trivia for you, uh, BSSC Productions fans. All right, guys, that's a wrap. That is indeed a wrap. So yeah, we've we've done a bunch of filming. Um, obviously, you know, Byron falling in, who was that? Me yeah. falling over, and Byron having to frantically wash some big blood out of his hair. I was panicking. I was like, is this going to stick in the hair? Is this going to be permanent? I actually had no idea, but I think we've with, got everything. Especially with the fact that, you know, your hair is dyed and all that. We didn't know yeah. how to react to the dye at all. Yeah, like, this has just been a very improvised film. Like, we... Think, oh, I've got fake blood on the handle. Yeah, I need to wash my hands. Um, yeah, we kind of got all the main stuff for this film a few minutes ago. We've just been going around getting random other shots we make we think look cool now. But we think we've got everything. I'm going to have to do some like recording mm -hmm. of my voice that's going to go over some shots in the film. But other than that, that is a wrap. Yes, finally we've got everything done. Yeah. I think it only took us about two or three hours to do all this, surprisingly. Pro yeah. Probably th three to four, I'd say, mm. if we're being realistic. But still, hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, see you. Bye.